Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to install Fireflies 23.7. Uh, a lot has changed since the last video I made, so I just thought I'd do a refresher. Uh, you come to fireflies.com uh, under downloads, uh, it'll show you all the platforms we support um, Windows, Linux, Mac, Docker, Android upgrades. Uh, if you want to do it for Pi, for instance, you would just install the Linux based one. Um, that's what I'm going to do today, is just install Linux. Um, you can even install the server or the node. Um, both will show you commands and show you the instructions. I'm just going to install um, the server for now. Um, it's a base install. You first need to have .NET 7 installed for your platform. I've already got that installed on my system. So you just copy that command. Open up your terminal. Click paste. Like if you're doing this on Windows, you just download the install and click next a few times and it'll install it for you. Um, but then it launches up Fireflies up there, tells me the URL to open. And here it's up and running. Uh, so what's changed in 23.7 is uh, it, it no longer ships with all the plugins. This just reduces the download um, file. Um, so you, if you want to use anything but the basic uh, plugins, you have to go to plugins first. So this is what this is saying. So I go to plugins page. I click add. I mean, I choose which ones I want to use. So I want to use it, use the video nodes. You know, if you want to use image or audio, you could download those as well. But I just want videos for now. So click download, click close. Videos and nodes is now there. So you can go to flows to create a new flow. And since I downloaded video nodes, I now have some video uh, templates. And if I was to go to download the audio or the image nodes, these will update. So I'll quickly do that just to show you what happens. So I'll go back to plugins, click add, uh, audio, image, oops, audio, the comic nodes as well. Okay, so we've got those plugins now. Can add, and now this list is more complete. Uh, since I'm running on Linux and not inside a Docker container, I also have to change my uh, FFmpeg variable. Um, if you're doing this on Windows, it's automatically detected. If you're doing it in Docker, this is correct as well. It's just if you're doing a, a custom install, basically you're just going to make sure this points to your um, FFmpeg. So if I typed in where is FFmpeg, it tells me it's in the user bin directory. Um, so I just update that. You don't need to worry about FF Probe for now. Nothing is actually currently using it. Some scripts may use it, or you may want to use it yourself, but nothing internally is using it, so I can just leave it as is. Uh, so I come with flows. I'll create a flow. I'll just create a basic um, video converting flow. So convert video. I'm just going to call it convert. Uh, I want to keep it as MKV. I'll make it H.265. I'm just using um, CP encoding at the moment. I'll do AAC, uh, audio same as, uh, um, same as original, output I'll save to a different folder. Uh, I'll save it to my home directory. Videos. Oops, I had a dot in there. Uh, converted. Uh, I don't want to delete the original, I don't want to downscale. I'll remove black bars. I'll remove other audio. Uh, so that just basically added a flow for me, so I can come in here and change it if I want, um, but, you know, for this example, this is all I need. Um, I could also um, oh, I'll go to plugins, and I'll add, say, Discord, download, close, close, yeah. and then I can send a notification to Discord when the file has been moved. I convert file dot full name converted file converted uh, success. I'm gonna just connect that up. Uh, save it, and now I have to add a library to process my files. So I'm gonna select video library from here. If I uh, didn't select anything. Uh, uh, it would pick up every single f f um, file in these folders. So if you by selecting video library under advanced, it adds this filter. 
and this filter basically just looks for any video extensions. Um, so I'm going to change this to my home directory. Uh, unprocessed. My flow is convert. Uh, since I've only got one flow, it doesn't matter about priority. Uh, hold minutes is if I want to hold a file before processing it. Um, sometimes you want to, might want to do this if you're using a DVR or something where a file might suddenly grow or it might not be written to for like five minutes. So you can say, all right, hold 30 minutes. Uh, click save. It picked up all my files instantly. Uh, if you don't like these messages, you can come into settings and go to logging and turn off the uh, notifications. Uh, file added is probably fine to remove, turn off. Um, but these other ones tell you when a file starts processing, when a file has finished processing. Um, if so, so I come to my dashboard, you can see it's picking one up. Um, starting to process it. I can look at the log file, see what's happening. Um, it's just currently going at 3.5 speed. It's using my CPU at the moment. Um, oh no, it's using Vapi. Yeah, it's using hardware encoding. Oh no, it's not. It's using um, HT, uh, yeah, lib x LibX two six five is CPU encoding. Uh, I've got AMD CPU in here, and I haven't put the codecs in there. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's basically it. You can go to your nodes, increase the runners. So if you want to do more than one file at a time, so if I want to do three files at a time, um, it will take a few seconds to find. Uh, it's got a new runner it can use. See, it, no one just popped up now, um, and no one just. I don't know what just finished. There you go, three runners ago. Uh, so it um, told me it finished um, processing there. It shows how long each part took. Um, so obviously the longest part is the FFmpeg builder executor. So it's actually running FFmpeg. And it took uh, just over a minute. I can see the log just for that one to see what happened inside that. I can see like a video encode log which just tells you um it, yeah it can't use a um, video in, uh, hardware encoders so I tried um I tried um nvidia then qsv then amf then um something Oh, Vappy. There you go. Yeah, so yeah, these error messages can be ignored. It's basically, it's literally all it's doing is trying to see if it can use these encoders. So it starts with NVIDIA, then it goes to a QSV, then it goes to AMD's one, and then it goes to Vappy. Um, if you're running on a Mac as well, it also try a Mac um, encoder. Uh, and you can download a log if you want. Um, but yeah, then you'll, it'll show you your up, uh, recently finished, your upcoming. Uh, you've, uh, how much data has been saved. So I've processed five items. I've saved 14 megabytes. Uh, these are all test files. I've been nothing big at the moment. So it's not going to see huge savings. Uh, but that's the uh, basics of file flows. You can come to your log here to see what's happening. Um, up here you can see which uh, different levels of logging so you debug will show you all the logging um, if you just want to see warnings you can there will be some warnings in there uh, you know that warning uh, this will be fixed in the next version um, it's yeah it's just a bug you can ignore it um, what else uh, variables scripts ah so if you want to use um, scripts uh, scripts let you extend the functionality. Uh, so these are community scripts. Um, if you can go in, uh, wait, uh, if I go repository, you can look at all the scripts that you can download. Uh, so these are what's available. Um, so if you wanted to check a video bitrate is greater than something, just download it. Uh, I can now go into a flow, so this one, 
go to the bottom where scripts so that script has now been added to the flow I can say all right I want to see if it's greater than 192 kilobytes um, it's got two outputs so yes it is no it's not so then you can say all right I, I want to you know encode with a different encoding settings based on this script output um, so yeah that's basically what those do and leave and if you want to learn how to write them it's all under the help page so you can see um, uh, see scripting uh, these are all the scripts available uh, yeah, it's a broken link uh, and yeah flow scripts how to create one so it's all in here on the documentations um, so yeah basically this uh, information up the top um, tells you the output so you know it is greater than it is not greater than parameters saying it takes in this parameter of max bit rate um, and this is just some other information about um, the file uh, about, about the script and you can also modify it so you can, you can go to um, duplicate oh, we found a bug awesome well they'll be fixed in the next version uh, but yeah you can just like a duplicate this way My custom script. Um, another parameter. I'll make it a string just for example. Let's say close. My custom script. So now there's uh, two parameters, another parameter, and this takes in a string, and this takes in an integer. Um, so yeah, that's how you. Add, um, that's why it needs that strict um, comments at the top to generate this form, so users can set these parameters and use these scripts easily. Um, but yeah, uh, that's kind of a quick overview of what's changed in uh, 23.7. Well, not really. It's more like a quick overview of how to install twenty three point seven. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I suppose that's it. Um, have a good day, everyone. Um, any questions? Um, just jump on the forum or jump on Discord and you know, ask away. Have a good day. See you.